All right, folks, welcome back for Chapter 2, Part 2 on tax. We're going to pick up where we left off with Carrie. Carrie wants to buy sports equipment, and it costs $140. The sales tax in her city is 5.75%, and the question is, what is the total cost of the equipment? Now, so far, we have only been taking and finding out what the tax is. Now they want us to find the total cost, which takes it up to the next level. That last little step, it's the easiest step. Trust me there. Remember, before you can find the total carry paid, what quantity do you need to find? You need to find out how much tax she paid with that 5.75%. Now, the very first method they're going to show us for doing this is going to be to use ratio reasoning. What they want us to do is write a proportion relating to equivalent ratios, just like all the other racial reasoning problems we've done, and they let T represent the amount of sales tax. So right here, you've got tax over $140, because that's how much they spent on the equipment, is equal to 5.75 to 100, which is 5.75%. From there, they're going to take and do their strange voodoo math, which eh, doesn't look too bad this time. They said to themselves, 100 times what is 140? And that is going to be 1.4. And that, you might be able to figure that one out in your head. Likewise, they took and multiplied 5.75 by the 1.4. And with, when they do that, they're going to find out what the actual tax is that they're um, paying. When you multiply 5.75 times 1.4, you get $8 and a nickel. That is how much tax is being paid, $8 and a nickel. But that does not answer the question. The question wanted to know, what's the final cost going to be? So now you have to take that $8 and a nickel, add that to the $140 for the selling price, which takes you $148.05 for your final answer. Now, I do want to point out, this is all showing your work. They use their proportions, and they gave supporting work explaining how they got there. I wouldn't necessarily require all the words, but I do need to see some mathematical work justifying where this 805 came from. I made my cursor a little bit bigger here, made it a bright yellow, so maybe it'll help you see what I'm pointing out now. As we get started, we're going to look at method two, and you're going to see that it starts the same exact way where they wrote a proportion. You have T is to 140 as 5.75 is to 100. But now they're going to take and do something totally different. This time they're going to use the properties of operations, which basically means the order of operations to solve it. And the, um, also rules for isolating the variable and, variable and equation. So the first thing they did is this really crazy magic step where they took and divided 5.75 by 100. And when you do that, it says right here, divide 5.75 by 100, and that gave them this number right here, the 0 and 575 ten thousandths is the proper way to say that. Next, they looked at the variable. The variable is t. T is being divided by 140, and as I said before, the final goal of an equation is to isolate the variable. So where they're dividing both sides, both dividing the left by 140, they're going to take and multiply both sides by the 140. They did 140 over here on the left, they did 140 over here on the right. Now when I'm doing it, I like to put this one after the number and it all comes down to subtraction which we're not dealing with right now but it's always a good idea to put this number after the number you're doing it to not before it with multiplication it really doesn't matter with subtraction it makes all the difference in the world 140 divided by 140 is 1 and 1 times t is t so that's where this came from you put a line through your 140s right here which i can't do because it's on the main screen and that those divide each other out, leaving 1, 1 times t is t. And from there, all that's left is to multiply 0 0.575 times 140. And I know some of you all still don't like working with decimals, so I'm going to show you how I do that part of the problem. 
So I've got my 0 0.575 times 140. Remember, commutative property of multiplication says order does not matter when multiplying. Doesn't matter which one we put on top. 0 times 5, 0 times 7, 0 times 5, and 0 times 7. That takes out the first row. Now it gets a little more challenging. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 7, that's going to be 28, plus 2 from the 20 is going to be 30. 4 times 5, that's going to be 20 again, plus the 3 from the 30 is going to give us 23. Finally, one more step over. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 5 is 5. We're going to add those up. 0, 0, 5, 10. Carry the 1 and 8. And finally, bounce the decimal. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So, right there, you can see your tax is going to be $80.50. So, we're going to come back over here. 80.50. If I did everything right, and check our answer. And what did I do wrong? Uh-oh, hold on. I see what I did wrong. Do you see it? It's right there. I missed a zero. I should have that decimal over here which means this should have bounced one more space to the left, giving me a tax rate of $8.05, not $80.50. Try again, and this time we got the right answer. And once again, just like last time, you're going to take and add the total cost, $8.50 plus 140 gives you the total cost of $148.50 just like we got the last way we did it. All right, now it's your turn. Pause the recording and find out what the total cost is going to be for the sweatshirt that Ryan wants to buy. If the sweatshirt costs $42.99 and the sales tax is 7.5%. 7.5. All right, first thing we're going to do is divide 7.5 by 100. And when you do that, oops, let me change my marker here. Let's try a pretty shade of blue. 7.5 divided by 100. First number went in the house. 100 went into 7, 0 times. Bring the decimal up. Goes into 75, 0 times. However, it goes into 700, 7 times, which is going to be 700. Leaves 50 left over. Annex in another 0. Goes into that 5 times, which is 500 with nothing left over. So now I can say that T divided by 42, whoops, put my decimal wrong, 42.90 is equal to 0 0.075. But we're not done. Now we got rid of, we have to isolate our variable. Our variable is being 42.90. That is dividing T, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 42.90. Now I want to point out something as I'm doing this. You notice that on the left hand side, hold on just a second, let me finish writing this out, 42.90. On the left hand side, this number is in the middle. It's not in the bottom, it's in the middle or the top because it represents a number over one. If you put it in the bottom, it no longer represents a number over one. It represents one over a number. So you always have to put this at least in the middle, if not in the top. Of course, these divide out becoming one. One times t is t. And when you multiply these out, I'm going to go ahead and use a Satan on this one. 0 0.075 times 42.9. And when we do that, we're going to get $3.22 rounded to the nearest penny in sales tax. But that's not going to be the final cost. To get the final cost, the next thing we have to do is take the original price, $42.90, add the $3.22 to that, and when you do, you get 2, 11, 6, and 4. Your decimal comes down $46.12 is what we're looking for. Let's see if we're right. 46.12 Check our answer. Uh-oh. Something went wrong. Let's, let me figure out what it is. I just found my mistake, and it was a stupid mistake. What do you see right here? 42.99. What do you see on my work over here? 42.90.
that's my mistake. So I should, in fact, be put, multiplying both sides by 42.99. And when I do that, 42 point, whoops, not sure what happened there. Let's try this again. 42.99 times the, what was the number we came up with? 0 0.075, oh, miss that again, 75 equals $3.23. So we were one cent off because of that error. So let's try this again. We should now be $46.13. See if we're right. Change that 12 to 13. And we're wrong again. Dang it, I goobered it one more time. I didn't change that zero to a nine. So when we actually add it up, we're going to get $46.21, which will work. As much as I hate making mistakes, you notice I leave my mistakes in here for you? That's because I want you to understand, I make mistakes too. But I get back in there and I research it and I figure out where my mistakes are. And usually if I make a mistake, it's because I wrote something down wrong. Why do you make mistakes? Do you dig in and find out? That's what you need to be doing. And now we get another problem. The cost of a hotel room rented for two nights is $280. There's also a 12% hotel room tax. What's the total cost of the room? And they want to know, is this going to be greater than or equal to or less than $28? Well, 10% of $280 would be $28. But we don't have 10%. We have 12%. And 12% is bigger than 10%. So the number we're going to be looking at is going to be greater than 280. I would also like to point out that this number right here, that 2, that is a distractor. It has no bearing on solving the problem. If it was two nights at $280 a piece, then yes, that would matter because then we'd be adding the two nights together. But right now, that two nights is a distractor. It is there to get you in trouble. First method they're going to do is use the ratio method for reasoning. They've started out just like they had before using a proportion where they said t is to 280 as 12 is to 100, also known as 12%. Next, they're going to say 100 times what is 280? Well, the answer to that, if you think about it, is going to be 2.8. 100 times 2.8 is 280. That means they also have to multiply the 12 by 2.8 to find the value of t. And when they do that, they find right here that t is going to equal to $33.60. So the tax that they're paying on the hotel room is going to be $33.60. And you can see now in the line, uh, the um, proportion, they replace the t with the $33.60. Last thing they need to do is add those two numbers together. $280 plus $33.60. That's going to be $313.60. Check our answers and it checks. Method two, properties of operations. You start off the same way we did with the proportion before, but now we're going to take 12 divided by 100. And when you divide 12 by 100, you're going to get, whoops, I went too far, pushed the wrong button. You're going to get 0 0.12. Think about it. 12 hundredths, 12 hundredths, written as a decimal value. Now we have to isolate our variable. T is dividing by 280. So we're going to take and multiply 280 on both sides. For our next step, you can see they did it on the front. I like to do it on the back. But either way, 280 is multiplied on both sides. These 280s divide each other out, leaving 1, 1 times t, that's going to be t, and then 0 0.12 times 280, we can do that one on some paper here. So when you multiply that out, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 8 is 16, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 8 is 8, 1 times 2 is 2, Multiply add them up, 0, 6, 13 and 3, bounce, 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 bounce. So our tax is going to be 
and 60 cents. I must really be getting tired. It is 9 o'clock on Friday night. I haven't stopped moving yet today. I totally missed that that one that I carried had to be added to that too, making that $33.60. And when you go back and check your answer here, we're going to plug it in again, 33.60, and check it now, and that's going to be correct. When you add, um, add those two, that amount to the 280 you're going to get the final answer of $313.60. Now it's going to be your turn to find out you're renting a hotel room with an ocean view for $275 tonight and the tax rate is 14 percent. I don't know what third world country that's in, but the cheapest hotels in Orange Beach right now during the summertime is going for close to $500 a night. Insane. A hotel room. We're talking about the sleep in here, guys, okay? From here, we're going to multiply, and the, and the local sales tax is close to 20%. But I have digressed. They're paying $300. Be careful. It's going to be $275 per night let's highlight that that's going to be important your tax rate is 14 percent and here comes the tricky part the campos family is planning on spending three nights you need to take into account this time this time the, the it, we're looking at a per night you need to figure out how much three nights are and then find the tax of that go ahead and pause your recording and solve Okay, I set my problem here by first finding out how much the three nights of the room were going to cost just for the room. $275 a night times three nights, that gave me $825. That's the room without any tax. Next, I set up my proportion. T is to $825 as 14 is to $100. We could take and say, well, $100 times what is going to be $825? It'd be 8.25 but we're not going to do that instead we're going to use the other method we're going to say t over 825 is equal to 14 hundredths is 0 and 14 hundredths now i'm going to isolate my variable the variable is being divided by 825 so i'm going to multiply both sides by 825 you see how i did it up high here is equal to 0 0.14 times 825. Those numbers just divided each other out becoming 1. 1 times t is t. And now we're going to have to do our last little bit of grunt work here. 825 times 0 0.14. And when you multiply that out, 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 2 is going to be 8. Plus 2 from the 20 is 10. And then 4, that's going to be 32, 33. Next, I got 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times 8 is 8. That's going to give me a 5, 5, and an 11. So we are looking at $115.50. But we're not done. That's not the total cost. That's just the tax. Now I have to add the $275 and the 800 I'm sorry, not $275. I have to add the $825 and the $115.50. Go ahead and throw some decimals and zeros in here. And when we do 0, 5, 10, 4, 9, we're looking at $940.50 for our final answer. So let's plug it in, see if we're right. $940.50 and yes, we got one right. Excellent. This is where we're going to stop with part two. When you come back, we're going to dive into part three, example three of chapter two, section two involving sales tax.